Welcome to Insight. Today we are chatting with Bill Sanford, Jeff Hanks, and Dennis Wyman of Lakeland Public Television about the importance of public television to community. They have generously agreed to share some of their experience with us. I'd like to thank you all for joining us today. Well, thank you. Thank so you. I've thank really you. been looking forward to this because you're the professionals. I focus on nonprofits, and it's really important to talk about and unpack the importance of uh, public media to community, particularly in north central Minnesota, the broadcast area that, that you serve. Could you talk a, a little bit about the broadcast area, Bill? You're, you're the general manager here. Could you talk about the broadcast area, the communities that you serve, and the number of people that benefit from your services? Sure. Um, we serve you know, a large geographic area from uh, down in central Minnesota in the Little Falls area up all the way pretty much to the Canadian border and then a, a big swath east and, east and west as well. So it's a, it's a large geographic area, but you know, the largest communities that we serve are Bemidji and Brainerd, which are under 15,000. So it's a challenge uh, providing, you know, being a local entity to all these different small communities. But it's, uh, it's a challenge that we're working hard on, on meeting. And you also have within that broad geography people who live very different lives. You have uh, people who are, are uh, serving uh, small urban environments. You have people who um, are farmers and, and might be um, somewhat remote. You have native communities. Um, and, and you have all sorts of different industries in this area. So the needs and the interests of your broadcast viewers are as diverse as, as any uh, large market, yet they are geographically dispersed. And it's, it, it provides some, some news coverage uh, challenges, doesn't it, Dennis, as, as the news director? Well, it certainly does, and um, as Bill mentioned, the viewing area from one end to the other is about 250 miles, and because of that, we have two separate offices with news personnel to cover the varying region, and there are definitely different stories in different parts of our viewing area. As you mentioned, the farming community is a, is a big portion when you go west and also south. Uh, closer to Bemidji and Grand Rapids, you have more logging uh, industry and things like that, and the key is to, to have enough reporters to cover the miles you need to get to some of these stories. And uh, we have two reporters in our Brainerd office and three reporters in our Bemidji office, which allows us to, to get out and, and cover all these small towns in our area. And the logistics is also very complex. You have to worry about transmitters. You have to worry about how do you actually connect with your audience, even understanding how the audience connects with your programming is, is, is a challenge. Can you talk about the extent of your operations, Jeff? You're, you're the production uh, well, manager. Yeah, the programming and production manager. But, um, and I guess the big thing I would like to point out is that uh, unlike uh, you know, the big broadcast networks, uh, commercial networks, um, within PBS and Lakeland, of course, our programming schedule and the productions really themselves, they belong to our viewers. They belong to our uh, uh, citizens in our coverage area. So we really try and tailor our programming schedule and our productions to what they need. Um, uh, we have uh, community advisory councils we work with. Uh, we listen to them. We get uh, feedback from our viewers with a preference poll. Uh, but I try and tailor that programming schedule to what our diverse audience needs. Uh, we have, we uh, uh, try and feature as much Native American programming as we can. We have a dedicated uh, uh, First Nations experience uh, uh, broadcast channel for Native American programming. Um, the productions we do, um, we try and tailor for what the people in our area, they want to see. We do a lot of local arts, culture, and history. Um, and it's very specific to the towns and people with, within North Central Minnesota. Um, we do the newscast. We've done sporting events. Um, you know, ge geography kind of de determines your destiny in, in different ways. And I think that led to our newscast and it led to um, some of the productions we're doing. So. And, and you also, on a literal shoestring, you generate amazing content and amazing programming as, as, as professional as any that you would find in this nation. And you have such a, such a, a modest footprint, but a, but a powerful footprint. Uh, how many different channels do you have? And, and talk about the way those channels are shaped and the technology that you use to, to provide them. Sure, um, we broadcast six different channels. Um, We've got everything from a dedicated kids channel to uh, FNX, Jeff mentioned, uh, that uh, serves Native American folks. Um, you know, the interesting thing about FNX, too, is we've gotten a lot of feedback from the non-Native folks, too, that they really find it interesting to learn more about the culture because there really is a divide. And, you know, um, 
between uh, uh, the Native American community and, and the rest of the area. A divide in knowledge, a divide in exposure, and, and, and there are and historical just community. divides. I right. mean, just even geographic, you know. Um, while their natives are certainly interspersed, I mean, you, you know, with the reservations, um, there, there's even a geographic divide. So I think a lot of people really don't understand the culture very well. So I think FNX has been an opportunity to help present that to folks. So I think that's been good. And it's a safe space as well. You, 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 the, 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 there's a way that you can access knowledge um, and then emerge from your home uh, really more equipped to deal with people that you're going to be interacting with every day anyway. Sure, sure. So, so you know, that, that's one of the channels. Um, we have a channel uh, that doesn't have any kids programming. So for grown-ups that tune into most PBS stations during the day, you're going to watch kids programming, but we have a, a channel we call Lakeland Plus that is all uh, prime time type of programming. Uh, another channel that's really interesting, uh, we collaborate with all the public television stations in Minnesota on a channel called the Minnesota Channel, and that is all content that is generated in this region, uh, in the Midwest. Uh, so it's none of the national programming, and we all contribute content to that. The channel originates out of uh, Twin Cities Public Television, but all of the stations in Minnesota and uh, some, some of the surrounding states contribute content to that channel. So it's, uh, it's kind of an interesting look at our region. So, so you actually share. So your news uh, people are actually going out and you're creating content, and then of that content, a subset of that is shared across the, the state and the region. Um, our news is local to our station because news obviously is, is, you know, we try to be as local as possible with our newscast. So our news really does focus on our region. So um, our, our nightly news isn't carried on the Minnesota channel, but uh, we do a, a series called Common Ground, which uh, highlights local artists and events and things throughout the region. That's carried on the Minnesota channel and some of our other content as well. So. And that sharing is, is really unique. The, the whole idea of creating content, sharing it, putting out to the public, uh, not having it tied to advertising, not having it necessarily tied to an earned income stream is, is very unique. Talk about how you develop the resources required to serve the public in this way. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that's always a challenge. That's, that's the biggest challenge I have uh, in a small market like this, and it's typical for all small market PBS stations. You know, we're, we're pretty reliant on, on state and federal funding. Um, it's a big piece of our budget. Uh, but we also uh, do get uh, uh, great support from businesses from around the region and uh, from individuals. So it's, it's, we talk about it as a three-legged stool. You know, there's some state funding on one leg, uh, uh, federal funding on the other, and then uh, you know, local, local dollars. Um, um, it's a challenge, and, and you know, our, both our state and federal funding, uh, uh, some people don't realize that you know, their $36 gift isn't gonna really make that big of a difference, but it does because our state and federal funding is matching. So those individual gifts do make a big difference and, and we really do rely on that. So somebody that's making a $36 contribution may think, well, that's not really gonna matter. It really does matter, it's, it, it, they all add up. How do you ensure that the news that you cover is relevant to the community, is valued by the community and is watched by the community? To do a newscast for just Bemidji, there's not the resources to be able to do that. To do a newscast for just Brainerd, there, we don't have the resources to be able to support that. But to, when we incorporate all our, all our cities in our viewing area, um, that's where we're, what we're able to do. So that's our, that's our challenge. And we try to get to as many of the small, s small uh, cities in our viewing area as much as we can. A lot of times our sports coverage will get us into those cities. Um, before we started this local newscast, which was 19 years ago now, there were these, these small high schools in this area had no TV coverage at all. Uh, since we've come in, we get to, we get to a ton of local uh, high school games. And in those communities, that's a big thing. Uh, that's, oh, a, yeah. that's a big thing going on. So uh, beyond our, our news coverage in those cities, we get into there with sports as well. And then our weather coverage, which uh, we hear all the time about how, you know, the, the, the other stations don't have accurate forecasts for this part of the state and, and how, how our forecast is uh, tailored for this, for the lakes country and for, for uh, north central Minnesota and, and we hear a lot of positives about that as well. So when you balance your programming schedule um, between news, between human interest, between sports coverage, between um, entertainment, how do you make those decisions to ensure that you have balance in your programming? Well, um, 
A, a large part of our uh, program is scheduled to prime time. You know, we're we're a PBS affiliate, of course. So you take um, also supplied. Yeah, you know, we we carry all the quality uh, Nature's Nova's Masterpiece Theaters. Those are called Common Carriage. You know, uh, mm -hmm. those are very important. You know, a lot of people look to us as a PBS station just as much as they do right. a, a local station looking for that uh, the Downton Abbey type of thing. Um, so it's it's important that we provide that to people. Um, but at the same time, we like Bill would say, Bill and Dennis would say, we really try and focus on the local, uh, the local service. So we uh, we put a lot of emphasis uh, throughout the entire schedule on trying to fit in that local aspect whenever possible. Now you also have to run as a business, so you have to hire people, uh, you have to train them, you have to retain them. Um, there are always uh, some challenges with, with with those three. Talk about how you shape the organization as an operating entity that has the talent and the competencies required to, when 10 o'clock runs around, you're, you're there, you're on camera, and you're, you're delivering the news. And, and you have a team in back of you, and the cameras are on, the operators are there, the, the staff is there, the broadcast is going to happen. Uh, how do you ensure that, that you have the team that can do all that? Well, you know, that is a challenge. Uh, we're, we're very fortunate that we've got a core committed group of people in our management team that have been with the station for many years. Um, Dennis has been with us since the start of news. Jeff has been with us a long time. Um, our operations manager, uh, um, our engineering manager, folks like that have been with the station for many, many years. That said, you know, we are a small market station. We have a lot of turnover. Um, news reporters, typically, Dennis, what, a year and a half? We're under no illusion that we're going to have these reporters here for a long period of time. It's going to be a, a short amount of time and we work to get them up to speed as quick as we can and then we're happy for them when they get the next job. Do you have the same um, uh, challenges um, in terms of retaining people on the production side and, and on the programming side? Um, not nearly to the same extent. Uh, we have a fantastic group of uh, early talented production people here. Um, uh, gentlemen, a couple of guys who work in our um, arts, culture, and history programming. They've been with us for a while now. Um, and our staff uh, producer directors, of course, who work on just many different things from oh, the newscast phenomenal. to the sporting events we've covered to the other documentaries. Um, you know, we're a smaller market and they do tend to come and go, but not, not nearly to the extent of uh, the newscast. What was so intriguing to us and what was so exciting to us is the entrepreneurship that you exhibited in working with us to ensure that nonprofit organizations in the region uh, are, are being covered. Uh, so this type of partnership that we're modeling right here at this table and the type of uh, partnership that you describe, Jeff, is also part of the innovation that you bring to your own programming so that you can serve the community in the way that you do. When you approached uh, us and me and talked talk to us about, uh, about doing this series, uh, we were excited about it. I was very excited about it because... Uh, you know, uh, we're serving a very low income area and uh, the nonprofits are really an integral part of this community. They make such a big Fantastic. difference. And you know, the people that watch the series and, and see all the great interviews that you've done are gonna see that. And um, I was just pleased that we're able to, to partner and in, in, in highlight these folks and all the good work that they're doing. And, and the knowledge that you bring to your work and the knowledge that your other nonprofits in North Central Minnesota have is, is such a gift to the, to the nonprofit world and to the public media world. Bill Samford, Jeff Hanks, Dennis Wyman, thank you so much for helping us out in exposing the great work of Lakeland Public Television, and thank you all so much for your insights.